In 2010, researchers confirmed giant ragweed was resistant to glyphosate in Nebraska. It was the second weed to develop glyphosate resistance in the state. Mare's tail was the first in 2006. Growers in Ontario, Canada, as well as Ohio, Indiana, Iowa, Minnesota, and several other U.S. states are now all trying to control the weed with one fewer tool. If you aren't able to manage it early, it might not be hard to notice later. Nebraska Extension's Greg Kruger joined us recently to discuss giant ragweed's prominence in the state. Giant ragweed is just one of those that, uh, it, it's the, a beast. Uh, uh, we can see it grow 10, 12 foot tall. It's gonna outgrow corn in, in some situations. Uh, and uh, it's another one of those weeds that we have in Nebraska that are glyphosate resistant. So uh, it's one of those that uh, we certainly have to have on our radar in, in certain areas of the state. Tell me about where it's located in Nebraska. Yeah, so giant ragweed, interestingly enough, is uh, what we what I'd consider an eastern Nebraska weed. Uh, so as we get into uh, even uh, uh, Grand Island and farther west, we just don't see it very often. Not that it doesn't occur, but it's pretty uncommon. Uh, if we get into that eastern third of the state, uh, east of York, uh, then it becomes very, very common, and it kind of thins out uh, between uh, York area and, and uh, Grand Island. Uh, a lot of that's probably due to uh, the rainfall patterns that we have in the state. So uh, as everybody knows, uh, the farther west you go in the state, the less rainfall we have. Uh, giant ragweed likes to have a, a good drink every once in a while. And so uh, the more water we've got, the, the better uh, it, it's going to do. So uh, it does better in these uh, high rainfall environments. You said even within the eastern one-third of the state, giant ragweed is not exclusive but more prominent in certain counties. Yeah, so uh, in particularly the, when we talk about the glyphosate resistance issues, so uh, we tend to see uh, uh, the glyphosate resistant issues show up in those uh, probably four or five uh, southeastern counties and, and the four or five uh, six uh, northeastern counties. So if you're up in the, the, the top northeast part of the state or down in the uh, southeastern part of the state, uh, be uh, on the lookout because uh, you're probably dealing with uh, glyphosate resistance. Now, there's probably a, a few isolated pockets outside of that. Uh, we've worked on a few of them uh, in the past uh, few years, but uh, that's where the highest uh, concentration of uh, uh, glyphosate resistant or, or giant ragweed populations are. How difficult is control? What are your options? Uh, control is a little bit uh, challenging because uh, once it gets going, uh, it grows fast. Uh, uh, one thing that makes it a little bit easier than some other species is it has a really narrow emergence window. So uh, you're gonna, we're going to see that emerge in May, uh, maybe early June. And then uh, after that, the, the, the emergence is really going to thin out. So uh, we're not going to see it emerge early in the spring. Uh, we're not going to see it uh, emerge uh, late in the summer. So making sure that we've got some sort of a good heavy residual out there at the, uh, the time that that's starting to come up. So uh, making sure we've got something out ahead of planting is important. And then uh, making sure that uh, if we do see it come up that we manage it timely is also really important. Uh, because it's going to grow uh, 10 or 12 feet over the course of the summer, uh, you can imagine you break that down over how many uh, inches that's growing per week or per day and uh, it, you don't have a large window to try to get on top of it post-emergence. Thankfully, uh, some of the new tools that we've got coming in terms of dicamba tolerance and things like that are going to give us additional options to get on top of it. And we have seen that growth regulators are very effective on uh, knocking out the uh, uh, giant ragweed when it's at that smaller stage. Sharp impact on yields in both corn and soybeans? Yeah, giant ragweed, even though it's uh, not going to produce a lot of seeds at the, end of the se at the end of the year compared to a lot of other weed species we deal with, uh, it's very, very competitive in, in season. So uh, if we let this go or we let the problem go, well, we're really going to damage uh, the, the yield potential in that field. Even a few plants uh, uh, sticking up over that uh, canopy uh, across the field are going to eat up some yield.